Spoiler! 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 Judy finally confessed that she was upset. It turned out that her plans to help organize workers at Clouds, a sex-positive establishment in Night City, hadn't worked out the way she had hoped. Moments earlier, we had gone scuba diving on what felt like a date, but I wasn't sure. I also wasn't sure how Judy felt about me, because our attempts to bring workers' rights to the people failed when I ended up quick-scoping Mako, a friend and former crush of Judy's who turned backstabber on me after I retired the gang leaders who ran Clouds. Scuba diving with Judy has linking neurally, allowing us to experience each other's emotions while exploring the deep. She could also sense a darkness inside me. Keanu Reeves, I mean, Johnny Silverhand, was now living in my head. Long story. After, Judy explained. Wanted this to be just our day. There was only one thing to say. It, it is, is ours. I wanted. The raw scouring of the passage of time fades into warm and gentle waves until it disappears completely and we are amongst the heavens. It was a stark contrast from the rest of my time in Night City up until now. Ah, you want to have a good time? I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Transport ships on fire in the early desert light. I watched electron beams glitter through the darkness of cyberspace. Heard the dead speak. Observed the glass trying to drink itself. Witnessed Keanu Reeves get stuck in the floor in a room with his strut male escort. Saw a lady trying to take pictures of an adult toy with an invisible smartphone. Punched a man through the floor like he was a boppy bag. And watched these mean streets eat people up and spit them back out in an instant. All those moments will be lost in time. Like bloody tears in rage. That's right, people. Buckle up and strap in, because you know what time it is. 2020 Cyberpunk 2077 for the PC. Once the game begins, you pick your character's background. Nomad, Street Kid, or Corporal. I go with Street Kid, because this is Cyberpunk, baby. You then design your character, V. There's a number of options. We should know that none of these options can be changed in the game once you leave this menu. Want to change your hair color or style 50 hours into the game? You can't. Like, 2004's Grand Theft Auto San Andreas even had this figured out. Also, there's only two gender options for V, and we'll address that in a bit, because there's actually a longer discussion worth having here, but we'll get to that. So once my street kid V is set up, I find myself in the dingy dive bar of 2077. I reluctantly accept the job to help out Pepe, the bartender, who's in debt to a sleazy dork and a windbreaker, Kirk, who also has a large goon whose life struggles include properly eating a hamburger. You know this job stinks, but you end up in a parking garage anyway, and soon you find yourself in the car you're supposed to jack, and the next thing you know, you're staring down the barrel of a thug's gun, and then seconds later, the police show up and kick both your asses before dumping you back in the streets. The thug with the iron turns out to be an affable guy named Jackie, and you're montaged into a friendship as partners in crime. Jackie's another street kid like you, and his dream is to become a legendary figure of Night City. Legends are born here. And the game picks up with you and Jackie doing odd jobs, like rescuing a comatose woman from a bathtub full of ice. You start working for a fixer with a shady rep named Dexter Deshawn, and he sends you off to put some bug-eyed gangbangers in their place. Eventually, you meet Evelyn, who has a job for you and Jackie to steal something from Yorinobu Arasaka, the son of Saburo Arasaka, the 158-year-old CEO of the Arasaka Mega Corporation. Evelyn then introduces you to Judy, who shows you a brain dance, essentially a first-person recording of a real-life experience. It's a lot like that technology in the 1995 film Strange Days. You guys remember Strange Days, right? No? It was directed by Catherine Bigelow, who won the Oscar for Best Picture in 2010. It was also written by a guy named James Cameron? Though I should mention that brain dances first appeared in the original cyberpunk pen and paper game from 1988, which Cyberpunk 2077 was based on. Anyway, Judy takes you through the brain dance that Evelyn recorded while posing as an, um, adult companion for Yorinobu Arasaka, while gathering reconnaissance of the penthouse suite that you'll be breaking into. Can't be stupid. Afterwards, Evelyn confronts you and asks you to cut Dexter out of the job and keep it between you and her. But not knowing anything about Evelyn's motives or wanting to risk my rep, I opt to keep Dexter in the loop. Me and Jackie then head to the oldest bar in Night City called The Afterlife. We stop for a drink at the bar before meeting up with Dex and T-Bug, our netrunner, to go over the details for the heist. 
plan is for me and Jackie to enter the hotel your Nobra Arasaka is staying in, break into his penthouse suite, and steal something called a relic. Everything goes according to plan until after you lift the relic. Your Nobu Arasaka and his number one hench, Adam Smasher, enter the room and they are soon joined by his father, Saburo, and his bodyguard, Takamura. They both dismiss their muscle and have a brief exchange before bitterness between the two boils over, resulting in Your Nobu strangling his father. Your Nobu then puts the hotel in lockdown before telling everyone it was poison that killed Saburo, and they all just conveniently exit the room. You and Jackie freak out, but with T-Bucks help, you attempt a daring escape with the relic still in tow. But the case containing the relic gets damaged. And it turns out the relic is actually a biochip, and Jackie is forced to insert it into his data port to keep it from expiring. Okay. We lose contact with T-Bug, and later on it's confirmed that she was killed by security countermeasures. We flash our way out of the hotel and barely escape with our lives. Except Jackie's been fatally wounded in the crossfire. He gives you the biochip before he dies, and you're forced to insert it into your head to keep it from corrupting. With the job having gone completely sideways, Dex tries to figure out what your next move is, and sends you in the bathroom to get washed up. Upon exiting, you get cold cocked by one of Dex's goons before Dex domes you. The tile screen appears, and now the real game is about to begin. In 2023. Now you're Johnny Silverhand, lead guitarist of the early 21st century rock band Samurai. I'm here to say goodbye to all of you. About to play his final gig, but no one seems to quite know what that means yet. Do this. After the show, you bicker with Kerry, the lead singer, about the band breaking up. You then meet up with Rogue and hop on a helicopter. The helicopter dusts off and takes you to the rooftop of Arasaka's headquarters, where you and Rogue lead, well, essentially a terrorist attack to plant a nuclear bomb in the building. The Demolitron. We're good to blow. The bomb is planted, but before you escape, Adam Smasher, yep, the same guy who was hunting for your Nova Arasaka in 2077, catches up with you and takes you down. You wake up in one of Arasaka's labs, with a mushroom cloud that was the Arasaka Tower in the distance. The Burrow questions you while some lab tech fiddles with controls, and then you're fried with the Soul Killer. Now you're V again, and somewhere in cyberspace. Eventually you discover Johnny staring off into the abyss of the Electric Sea. And you? Who are you? Then you wake back up in 2077, find yourself crawling out of the landfill when Dexter arrives with Saburo's bodyguard, Takamura. Tax made Dex's bitch. Tax then blows Dex's brains out before knocking you out. You awake in tax convertible and soon get blasted out by goons on motorcycles. The court is a reckoning with a billboard pole. We end up back at Vix, the Ripper Dock shop. Wake up again. You know, there's a lot of downtime in this game. Anyway, Vix got some bad news. That biochip you put in your head after Jackie died contains what's known as an engram, a digital copy of another person. In this case, Keanu Re I mean Johnny Silverhand. That's right, Johnny Silverhand. You know what? Can I just call him Keanu Reeves? I'd rather puke out my ears. You all know who Keanu Reeves is, right? He played another guy named Johnny in 1991's Point Break. My name's Johnny Utah! Who cares? Okay, so the engram containing Keanu has now infected your brain and will eventually erase your identity. Essentially, it's a death sentence. Vic has Misty, his receptionist and Jackie's girlfriend, take you home to your apartment. Misty then presents you with a necklace made from the bullet that Vic pulled out of your skull. A lucky charm? Since the two of you were probably the people closest to Jackie, you talk about him a little more before going to sleep. You then wake up again, and Keanu's in your apartment, and he's pretty cranky. He demands answers, and you're just as confused as he is. Who you work for, start talking! You then pass out. No, wait! The next day, you attended a friend of for Jackie at his mom's bar. And from then on out, the game really starts to open up. You then pretty much flooded with random odd jobs from a variety of people while trying to deal with the whole Keanu Johnny situation. I investigate some odd goings on in an underground casino, and I end up killing everyone when a fight breaks out. I was just trying to be stealthy, but things went haywire. I joined a fight club to start off by beating up some weird twins, and eventually worked my way up to the champ, and it went down like this. I also got constantly harassed by Regina Jones and her jobs I couldn't care less about. The went pretty damn well. Damn it, Regina, go away! I'm trying to talk to Keanu Reeves! Also, it's 277, and I implants exist. So stop trying to act like you're better than everyone else with your eye patch, Regina. But it's not just Regina. All sorts of phone calls will interrupt scenes where you're talking to key characters, like here with Judy, and you can't even stop them. This literally happened two minutes later. Let me think for a sec. Hey, B! You hear me? Loud and clear. Don't need to yell. Basically, it's your run-of-the-mill open-world type stuff. Well, when stuff like that isn't happening, 
Though most of the time, I feel like the game pretty much just sends you somewhere, you kill everyone, and then you loot the place. So much repetitive looting in this game. So, so, so much. My play style is similar to Johnny Lawrence's Cobra Kai school of thought. One more step! I fucking dare you! And the best defense hey! is more offense. One more step! I fucking dare you! But there are exceptions, like the Delamay missions where you track down rogue AI cars, or the occasional pick something up and drive it there mission, the fight club mission, etc. Most of the time though, even though the game gives you options to be stealthy and non-lethal, it's much faster and arguably much more gratifying to just kill everyone who gets in your way, since the game almost never penalizes you for it. Like, there's a mission later on in the game where you're asked to rescue someone inside a power military installation, but not kill anyone in the process. Boring. Of course I killed everyone with a power sniper rifle by shooting through the walls. And the guy who requested a job was really upset and threatened me after. Careful around the borders. Accidents have a way of turning fatal. Oh, I know about things turn fatal, motherfucker. Oh, oh, come on. Why can't I shoot him? You know, people, cyberpunk hates freedom. I appreciate you doing things as cleanly as you did. Exactly as agreed. Bruce was freed and escorted. And the fact that you did it without unnecessary bloodshed isn't lost on me. In some ways, Night City never changes. The core missions of the game revolve around getting Keanu out of your head. Guess if you want to save the world, that's the first step. Get fucked in the head. You meet and can form relationships with a variety of individuals if you choose. There's Pan Am. But despite using the phrase, Eat my shorts. Okay. It's actually a really magnetic character. She's a bit of a nomad straight from her tribe. A gang of desert scrappers called the Aldecaldos. If you complete her story thread, you'll end up pretty tight with the Aldecaldos crew. All of us standing here. Oh yeah. After the hotel heist went bad, Evelyn goes missing. And that's when you start meeting up with Judy to try and track her down. Oh. But it turns out some really horrific things happen to Evelyn, and she eventually takes her life. I did manage to bond with Judy over all the blood of bullets along the way, which culminated into one magical evening. All set, congrats. Just gave you unlimited access to my pad. A thing of beauty. Unbelievable that bastard's somewhere in your head. Rogus came out Johnny's old plane from like 50 years ago, and she was there the night he nuked the Arasaka Tower. She now runs the afterlife and is a big player in the Night City underworld. Yeah, you know, Johnny eventually assumes control of your body to go on a date with her in an abandoned drive-in. But it gets a little weird for her, being that he's in V's body and like 50 plus years have gone by. Johnny, I can't. There's Carrie, Keanu's yeah, old bandmate and perennial lost soul. And also probably the world's most immature 90-something year old. I helped him do some odd jobs and eventually we reformed Samurai for a quiet one night only show, where Keanu gets control of V's body for a final farewell performance. In the end, maybe you and Keanu Johnny finally helped Carrie find his way. Maybe you should hang on to this, actually. No, you shouldn't have. Really. The very gun I tried to shoot Johnny with. River is a street smart detective, actually plays more by the rules than I do. Let's move. Let's go. So fucking remember. Although I actually didn't run into him during my initial playthrough because I never did the mission that introduces you to him. In fact, you could actually miss some really interesting side quests in this game if you don't go down the proper initial thread. You had a plan. You tried. It fell flat. While you are occupied with your shitty deal. You've already met Tak, your reluctant partner and key to getting back to Arasaka to try and solve the Keanu Johnny problem. Also, you need your help to clear his name as a Burroughs murder. Essentially, he's an ex-corporal Ronin. And of course, Keanu Johnny Silverhand. Finally, something that isn't a complete snore fest. A jaded, broken, rebel rocker turned terrorist, living ghost, come parasite in your brain that's slowly overriding your body. He's always showing up, criticizing your judgment calls. Don't be ridiculous, V. But sometimes gives sound advice. How about we take the wheels, V? That van could give us a slip any second. Sometimes not. Told you diving into this toxic waste was gonna end badly. Occasionally, he just appears to comment on something in a side mission. Man, I don't know. Maybe 69, 69, 69? 69, dudes! The game's story is as much as Keanu Johnny's as it is yours. Like... Can't believe this Seuss, the one who's gonna help us. Stripped of essentially all he ever had in the physical world, he's awakened over 50 years later to find the world even more broken in the wake of his actions. His legacy is now mostly an echo, with his old friends having done plenty of living without him. In time, he softens, just a little. Funny how you still manage to surprise me sometimes. In several flashbacks, you get to see what started it all. 
Back in 2013, Keanu had a girlfriend named Alt, who was a supercomputer programmer who's also, well, really physically fit for someone stuck in front of a computer all day, and was brutally kidnapped by Arasaka Thugs one night when she was out with Keanu. No! So Keanu Giant teams up with Rogue and a few others to lead a super violent assault on Arasaka to rescue Alt. Don't think you're I'm impressed! But upon reaching Alt, you discover her consciousness is no longer in her body. Keanu later says, She's not dead. Managed to escape. Alt fled. Into the net. Alt's tragic phase ultimately spurred Keanu Giant to nuking the Arasaka Tower 10 years later. Though apparently, in reality this game's 2013, Keanu Giant can just bust into Arasaka, gun down dozens of people, and be free to spend the next 10 years out? Clear of any legal or vengeful corporate recourse? I mean, I get it, it's a video game, so... okay? Get out of my way. Eventually, you do catch up with Alt in cyberspace in the present of 2077. She's no longer the Alt Johnny remembers from 60 years ago, though. She's probably more algorithm than human at this point. But she does agree to try to help get Keanu Johnny out of your head if you can somehow get her a connection inside the Makoshi, which is where Arasaka stores all the souls of the people that use Soul Killer on. And as it turns out, it was also a program that Alt wrote. You created Soul Killer. You handed Arasaka a fucking super weapon that dismantled me, you, and half the runners in Night City. Your alliance and workings with Tak eventually lead to a plot to get him close enough to talk to Hanako Arasaka, the deceased Saburo's daughter, and someone he thinks would be willing to hear the truth behind her father's death. So the plan is to sneak Tak aboard a ship Hanako is on during a parade. The parade looks amazing. Until it kinda doesn't. Ultimately, I end up in a boss battle with Oda, Tak's former apprentice and Hanako's bodyguard, and I take him down hard. But I don't kill him? At least I think not? Meanwhile, Tak catches up with Hanako, and things... They don't exactly go according to plan, and Tak ends up kidnapping her instead. Back at Tak's safe house, he tries to explain to Hanako the truth about what really happened to her father, but she isn't hearing it. And soon, Arasaka's strike team busts into the room. Tak is killed, and you barely escape with your life if the Keanu Giant takes over your body. You fucking dare float off! You wake up at some shithole motel outside Night City, where Keanu Johnny has dragged you to. Soon there's a knock at the door, and despite Keanu's pleading, you answer it. It's an emissary of Hanako, or rather, Hanako speaking through a proxy. She offers to have Arasaka find a solution to your Keanu Johnny problem. She now wants to meet you in person and hear what you have to say about her father's murder. Johnny doesn't like it, but eventually you'll have to choose to meet with Hanako in order to advance the game. When you do, the game tells you you hit a point of no return mission. Hanako is arranged for your meeting at an empty restaurant, and you discuss a plan to take down her brother, Yorinobu, and save your life. On the elevator down, you have another episode and pass out. And wake up at Vic the Ripper Doc's office. The situation with the biochip in your head has gone critical, and you don't have much time left before you're erased by Keanu. You find yourself with three or four options, which I discuss with Keanu. Number one, take Hanako up on her offer. Johnny hates this one. It smells like shit. Careful not to step in it. Number two, call up Pan Am and the Alucalus gang for backup and lead an assault on Arasaka to get Alt into the Mikoshi Soul Killer prison and find a solution to your situation. This option could get innocent people killed though. Number three, give Keanu and Johnny control of your body and he vows to team up with Rogue to get Alt into Mikoshi and take down Arasaka once and for all. Number four, stop fighting and killing people and end your life with a bullet once and for all. Choosing the ending where V can choose to simply end their life instead of going on one final run to test fate is handled seriously and is quite dire. It's followed by a grim aftermath showing the horrific consequences of such an action. But it's kind of a weird time to get hung up on morality when you're racking up the achievements through mass murder. Unless you're playing strictly pacifist, but let's face it, this isn't exactly Undertale. To be honest at this point, Hanako's offer probably made the most sense to me. I was already slashing and blasting my way through everyone in my path without issue. So to avoid seeing any other cows get hurt, including Pan Am, or maybe risking Rogue's life, I chose the Hanako deal. Once inside the Arasaka Tower, Hanako reveals an engram of Saburo is guiding her. And it goes well enough. I kill everything and everyone in my way, including a final boss battle with Adam Smasher. I find your Nobo in a room, draped in a large cape, quoting Westworld. Violent delights with violent ends. These violent delights have violent ends. Which I actually I think was quoting Romeo and Juliet. Violent delights have violent ends. I leave him to Hanako. I just want Keanu out of my head. You then wake up on a space station. You go through a series of monotonous tests to check the effectiveness of the procedure. But you never feel like yourself again. You're haunted by Johnny's voice. Come here. And Jackie's visage. Meanwhile, the TV reports a world stunned by the return of Saburo Arasaka. They took his engram and copied over his son Yorinobu's brain. As you continue to struggle from the flaw of the process to save you, you eventually are told you only have six months to live. 
You're then faced with two options. Live out your remaining six months on Earth and wait for your life to end, or become an engram and whatever awaits you in Arasaka's Mikoshi Soul Prison. Both options suck. Both outcomes suck. Choosing six months to live gets you back on your way to Earth, and Judy breaks up with you in a phone message. Choosing Mikoshi means you've pretty much become property of Arasaka and they're unknown. I just wanted to keep anyone from getting involved in my shit and getting killed. But the lesson here is, never trust an evil megacorp. Was it really worth it? Okay, so what happens when you choose to get Pan Am and the Aldecados involved? Well, Saul, the former leader of the Aldecados, makes you a member of the gang, and rallies everyone to help you attack Arasaka in a daring effort to break in. Members of the Aldecados get killed while storming Arasaka. Most notably Saul, who gets face stomped by Adam Smash. But eventually I slay Smasher and get Alt in to do her thing. I find myself in cyberspace now, with Alt reciting the first stanza of T.S. Eliot's The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Keanu Johnny is here too. Alt reveals that there's a problem though. She didn't account for the damage done to your body from Keanu Johnny's engram. For fuck's sake, Alt. You had one job and you fucked it up? You now have to choose. Go back to your body with six months to live, or go with Alt into cyberspace and give Keanu your body. Choosing to return to your body sends you back to Pan Am and the Alta Caldos. Now preparing to escape the Outlands for Night City for Arizona. Judy's come along too, ready to make the big move, and Vic's giving you meds that are making that six month death sentence seem a little less likely. After you break through the border and take a breath of the fresh night sky, you're finally free from the shadow of Night City, and find there's a future that's not quite fully written for you yet. If you choose to surrender your body to Keanu Johnny, we catch up with him several months later. He's now living out of some digi apartment building in your body. He's also taken a shine to a teenager in the apartment complex who gives him a ride to a local music shop. Keanu Johnny tests out a guitar, and the teen notices he plays like the legendary Johnny Silverhand. Keanu teases, Maybe I am Johnny? But the kid doubts him and points out, Johnny'd be like 80 million years old, and you're like, way too young. Plus, you're a girl. Johnny says, You know, this is just, just a body, how, how the dice, dice landed burned. for me. Not gonna be, be a girl, girl much long. longer, though. So hold up, if you play as a female V, in this ending, Johnny Silverhand actually goes from cis man to disembodied man to trans man. My man. Anyway, before leaving Night City behind, Keanu Johnny says his final farewell to his memory of V and gets ready to leave Night City on a bus. A little more sober and maybe even a little more wiser. As the bus pulls out, it's revealed that he left a guitar he bought behind for the kid from the apartment complex, perhaps suggesting that he finally understands that revolution just doesn't have to come in the form of a rock song or a nuclear bomb. Then there's a choice to let Keanu take over your body and team up with Rogue and storm Arasaka like they did over 50 years ago. Keanu goes to the afterlife and gets Rogue on board for one last ride, so to speak. Then Keanu and Rogue finally hook up, using V's body as a surrogate. Afterwards, you take a helicopter to storm Arasaka headquarters and murder your way to the Mikoshi. Adam Sandler shows up and kills Rogue before you scrap him. Once again, you get all connected and enter cyberspace. This time, Alt recites the final stanza of Sailing to Byzantium by W.B. Yeats. It's the same situation as last time though. V's body won't survive beyond six months with her in it. So either V can go back to their body for six months and die, or surrender to Johnny and go off with Alt into cyberspace. Giving the body to Johnny is the same as last time, except this time Rogue is dead when Keanu has to say goodbye. Keeping their body finds V picking up a short time later, replacing Rogue as ruler of the afterlife. Judy breaks up with you because you prefer power over her, but it's amicable. And in your final moments, you're attempting a daring space casino heist or one last score which may help you afford a cure for your condition. I'd actually say for the most part, the story elements are actually done quite well in Cyberpunk. Ooh, think someone actually wants to polish Mr. Policeman's badge. But the rest of the game itself is... Well... It's almost like two or three different games at one. And ultimately lacking a true, cohesive vision. Like the main story, main characters, and even some of the longer side threads are usually entertaining and engaging. But out in the open world is another matter. Most of the NPCs won't even look at you if you try to talk to them. I need a nap. Just a short one. Oh, watch it. You'll swallow a fly. Did mom send you? Yes. This was something that Shamu did like 20 years ago on the Sega Dreamcast. You wanna wrestle? Some other time, okay? And sometimes their lips don't even move. Oh god, nothing makes sense. And the dialogue within the quest is usually well written. But the street NBCs... Everything sucks. Well... What you playing at? It's almost like Tommy Wiseau wrote for them. Good doggy. Hi, doggy. You got a big dumb face. <laughs> He's cranky today. <laughs> Kiss my dead spunk. I actually couldn't find the Wiseau equivalent for that one. Oh, hi, Mark. Kiss my dead spunk. The open world itself is detailed and at times looks incredible and has sort of a lived-in feel, at least until you try to engage it. Like, hello, shopkeep. 
What's good today? I have no reason to live. What an innovative business model. The only vehicles in the game are cars, motorcycles, and trucks. And they sometimes have, well, let's just say some unique physics. And there's weird inconsistencies. Like, sometimes you can shoot out the tires on a car, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can only shoot out certain tires on a vehicle. The police will come after you for the slightest of infractions, like trying to talk to them, or even just getting too close. Also, like a half dozen times, I triggered a maximum alert from the cops and killed everyone and everything that came my way. And eventually they just gave up and I was no longer wanted. It's like, did I become mayor of Night City or something? The core combat gameplay is bad, at least when it comes to shooting. You've already seen how hand-to-hand -hand combat works. Stop. I'm done. I surrender. But most missions require you to use force, either direct or indirect, like by hacking people or stealth with occasional force to complete. The AI is not great. Where you got to, coward? Though there's occasional glimmers of thoughtful details, like enemies literally stumbling over the corpses of their fallen allies. But that AI. Not good. You don't say. It's not uncommon to encounter situations in the game that feel like there should be some sort of dialogue option before jumping to straight up violence, kinda like in Fallout games. And I'm not saying that Cyberpunk has to follow Fallout style. But sometimes there's situations where talking is the first option. And then there's others where there feels like there should be some sort of conversation before people start getting murdered, but you won't notice until you start getting shot at. Then other times you'll sell things through dialogue. Over there, take her. Hey, heads off, you dirty ass punk. But the game will apparently forget and attack you. Yeah, you better run! All throughout the game, there are various types of cyborgs, from Johnny's literal silver hand to people on the streets with different degrees of prosthetic body parts to fallen cyborgs like Ryan's. But you are largely unable to adapt or explore any of these changes to your character, even though you're surrounded by them. Again, you can't even get tattoos or alter your hairstyle once you leave the character creator. Something some open world games were already doing before the invention of the smartphone. Hello. You can get mantis arms, which are blades that come out of your arms to stab people with, gorilla arms, which are really handy if your truck gets submerged in the floor and you need to get it out. But otherwise, you're limited to invisible enhancements that affect stats and abilities. As I mentioned earlier at the character creator, you must choose either a male or female identity, despite being able to mix certain body attributes. And yet, the game actually does recognize gender identities outside the binary, in this spam email I found within the game. Must be some fuckery indeed. Now, I want to make clear that I'm not trying to equate gender identity with having robot eyes. Hello? But by allowing players to customize body types in ways beyond the traditional binary, CD Projekt Red, the developer, and CD Projekt, the publisher of the game, seems like they might have been aiming for inclusivity. Though it appears they may have confused gender expression with gender identity. In 2019, a Metro Gaming interview with a cyberpunk senior concept artist stated, For instance, you don't choose your gender anymore. You don't choose, I want to be a female or male character. You now choose a body type. Because we want you to feel free to create any character you want. However, you still must choose either male or female pronouns, which defines your gender identity in the game regardless of gender expression. And considering that V is already a gender neutral name, would it really been a big deal to add gender neutral they them pronoun options? Or make V pronoun lists with all dialogue directed towards V non gendered? Like instead of. She attacked me! Maybe something like. I'm being attacked! And now I'm just gonna stand here and. Uh... And I guess if you really wanna go the extra quarter mile, maybe throw in a voice pitch slider too. I mean, the game already has multiple cosmetic options for nipples and two different penis types with three different sizes. And I recognize this might not be a perfect solution for everyone, but it seems like something relatively painless that they could have squeezed in while they were adding five different pubic hairstyles with color customization options. Following so far. So would it really be that big a deal to throw in a couple options that might actually make some players feel more welcome in the game? And for a game set in the future where people are exploring their identities and or modifying their bodies, wasn't giving players those options kind of the point? Then again, Cyberpunk does sometimes frame gender non-conforming people and members of the queer community in some disturbing ways. And I'm guessing some of you are probably saying that gender identity affects who you can romance in the game. And that's true, but this could have been handled a ton of different ways. It's a video game, not a simulation. As far as a lack of giving players ongoing cosmetic options, well, the game itself isn't shy in declaring. In Night City, looks are everything. Then there's the bugs. In case you're curious, here are the specs of the computer that I played Cyberpunk on, as well as the patches. So in all fairness, I feel like I've already showcased quite a bit of the glitches already. But it's worth emphasizing the multiple game-breaking ones I encountered. I've run into multiple invincible enemies in a variety of circumstances that often require the reloading of a save and some loss of progress in order to negate their invincible status. I've also had at least a half dozen side missions that I had to abandon. 
because they apparently broke somewhere along the way and couldn't be completed. Including one mission where your entire inventory gets stolen and you have to recover it, except you can't because even though you're where it should be on the map, it's nowhere to be found. There's also another weird bug where sometimes I'll die, but still have more than zero life. Not sure what's going on there. Most of the main missions were stable in my playthrough. Although I did encounter a situation where I had to kill 13 enemies in one of the final missions, and the 13th enemy fell through the floor, and I couldn't kill him and I had to restart the mission. It's all a shitstorm anyway. There's no argument that the game was rushed out before it was ready, but even if you patched out all the bugs, you may still be left with a compelling narrative element, some decent but repetitive gameplay, and frankly tedious looting elements, wrapped up in a visually detailed but ultimately hollow open world environment. I need a nap. 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 And finally, I can't end this review without touching on the strange and needlessly misogynistic and bigoted social narrative that's constantly playing out within the background of the city. Wait, what? Hey. Where am I? What is this place? 